everyone, and welcome to Uncensored. I'm your host, Jordan Maskell, broadcasting here from my studio in High Level, Alberta. I've got a great guest on the show today. He's a comedian, actor, author, fellow Canadian, one half of In Hot Water. I'd like to welcome Mr. Aaron Berg to the show. So Aaron, thank you very much for taking time out of your day to speak with me, man, and uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Jordan. How are you? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. And as uh, I'm sure you've seen on Twitter, I'm a, a huge fan of uh, In Hot Water. And who, who would have thought that uh, an assault by a black woman in Times Square would have introduced me to all these these new comedians and, and people that essentially I was introduced from Anthony's firing, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, none of this would be possible without Anthony, and, and I feel like he's really given um, so many kind of misfits, yet creative people and artistic home at Compound Media where we're allowed to say whatever we want to say. And uh, we don't have to apologize ever, which is great. Mm -hmm. And how can you how can you apologize? Of course, when uh, you have such guests on as Isis Faggot or DeAndre Harambe Jenkins, and uh, you know, how do you guys get these guests, Aaron? Like, uh, very fortunate. I mean, uh, Ali Lerman does all the bookings, and we're so fortunate to get these people that are the voice of these little enclaves. You know. Uh, DeAndre Harambe is so tapped into, you know, what he calls the false narrative that surrounded Ferguson. And to have a gorilla with such audacity and courage to be able to come on our show, and although he's a satirical figure and in no way representative of the black community, but to be able to emulate and share what the black community feels makes us feel great. Nice as faggot. We were just so lucky to get him the day that he went to heaven right after the mm -hmm. Paul's nightclub shooting. Absolutely. I mean, it was in transition, pre-Ramadan. We were very fortunate. Oh, absolutely. Praise Allah for, for that sort of stuff. Now, have mm -hmm. you guys, uh, just touching on uh, stuff like ISIS faggot, have you got any uh, sort of backlash from people in the Islamic community, we'll call it? Uh, I don't think they're allowed to use computers. Uh, <laughs> or set. So I don't think... Um, Here's the beauty uh, of Compound Media is it it is subscriber only. Uh, so, you know, we're not out there for the masses yet. Uh, we know at some point the masses will get a hold of this stuff and probably uh, have some objection to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, uh, I mean, we're going to keep doing what we do. And it's like it, not have to apologize, which is the beauty. I mean, I'm. I'm in the midst of applying for two of the biggest jobs in comedy right now, in traditional comedy. And mm -hmm. if I were to get either one of them, I know as soon as they saw the stuff we did on Compound, they'd be like, oh, you're hired, you're fired. Like, mm -hmm. So I know that that would happen right away. Absolutely. But I won't apologize for what we do. We're sick of it. There's no point to apologizing for what you do. The, and this is exactly what uh, uh, Marconi and I have been fighting for since day one of starting Liberty Multimedia. We've been doing it uh, for a long time on our show. Uh, you have to have that that freedom to be able to do whatever you want, say whatever you want, joke about things. Nothing should be off limits. And to think that uh, I love the term in Hot Water introduced me to the term Dune Coon, and uh, it's, uh, <laughs> I have to say, my favorite racial slur of, uh, of 2017, or, or no, 2016, I guess. But yeah. we have to be able to not worry about a bunch of fucking guys in, in tablecloths and fucking turbans halfway across the world telling us what we can and cannot do with uh, comedy. Again, I do... It's more news, current events. I try to be funny, but I'm not a comic, right? And I'm sure it is, it's affected uh, your craft as well with, with the whole political correct move, movement and, and the social justice warrior cunts that are essentially essentially trying to fuck comedy, Aaron. Yeah, the, the beauty of that movement is that uh, for people like us that cling to freedom of speech and believe that if it's funny, you don't have to apologize, uh, eventually we will kind of burst out of that bubble that they're trying to create. And it's, uh, you know, it is sickening. But it's like comedy clubs, people are still, um, they're still not shocked by words, which is beautiful. I go to some places, I do this story now where, I'm set, where I pimped out a Persian girl years ago. Mm -hmm. And I say, it's not politically correct to call her a Persian girl. You have to use the right term, which is ISIS bitch. And I say <laughs> that. And I did like a coffee shop that was very liberal. And I heard people be like, oh. mm -hmm. so there's some, some people are still shocked, but like comedy clubs where they know what they're getting and they trust yeah. that you have a funny point behind it, you can still get away with it. Okay. 
And so you're from you're from York Mills, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, I've been um, I was sort of introduced to co- the comedy scene in Toronto through just being a fan of really the Joe Rogan experience, and uh, and Red Band was a big influence of mine. And so as soon as I hear people on a show, I want to see them do stand up. That's just yeah. for for me. I, I met Duncan Trussell. I saw Tom Segura a bunch of times. Uh, yeah. It's just it's it's a great uh, scene, but then I also uh, my friend Joe was uh, he's the owner of the co- uh, the Corner Comedy Club, and I'm sure you know Puff Mama as well of the Underground Comedy Club. Yeah, I went by the corner. Uh, I've done I did like a a stripper fundraiser for Puff Mama like a year ago. I hadn't stripped in like 20 <laughs> years, and they asked me to go in and do comedy and strip, and I did it. My wife videotaped it. And I still have it, but. Uh, yeah, they're they're great. The Toronto scene is really. Uh, I, I mean, it was great when I was back there. But the goal, if you were good, was to get out of Toronto. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's the goal for most comics. But some people stay there now. But a lot of really good comics in Toronto. Okay, and then yeah. you made the. So you did uh, four years as a male stripper. Then it was la- it was like two and a half. Okay, in and out. And was uh, and what sort of motivated you to do that sort of thing? I read um, uh, a few interviews just prepping for for this show, of course. Uh, one where you were doing a full Monty sort of act, and then a few family members came in. Yeah, my mom and my aunt came in, and this is twenty years ago when my dick was an inch and a half longer than it is now. It shrinks with age. <laughs> Does uh, it? But I was uh, I was a bodybuilder at the time. I started lifting weights because some chick cheated on me and I was like, I'll show her. Uh, and I never showed her. But, uh, <laughs> and then when, when you're big, you have like two choices. So I was like, I worked security for a while and then I had friends that were stripping and they're like, you make great money, you get a ton of pussy. And I was like, I want to do that. Mm-hmm. So I did it. And all those things happen. I mean, some nights you make shitty money. Some nights you walk out with four loonies and a couple dimes. But for the most part, it was pretty good. Right on. And, and was that before you uh, got the honors degree in philosophy at the University of uh, New Brunswick, right? Yeah, I went back after I, I was pimping this girl out and I started feeling horrible about it. So then I was like, I got to get out of here. So I went back to school. And, and so uh, what, yeah. sort of, what sort of motivated you to take a, a course in philosophy? I, it was uh, the, the first year that I, I went to U, I went to like three universities. I went to UNB, I went to York, which I never went to. Because I enrolled there, but I was stripping, so I never went to class. Then I went to Western. Then I went back to UNB. Uh, I took philosophy because it was, you know, the pursuit of wisdom, love of wisdom. That's what it was. And uh, it was also my highest grade in my first year. So I was like, oh, this will be easy. Okay. And then you make the decision because as a comic, like you said, you want to get out of Toronto. You move to New York. Uh, What sort of... uh, what was sort of the feeling? Did you feel like an outsider coming as a Canadian to New York? Or has so many Canadians come down and, and done that sort of trek? People are, are used to it. I feel like I was kind of the first ones of the Canadian comics to break through. There were a few Canadian comics that came down before, and they didn't really hit on the club scene. Uh, so a few of them headed back. But then I came, and the, after my migration, Nathan McIntosh came, Phil Hanley came. Alex Pavone came, um, and, they, and they're all doing well. But I, I, I mean, I always felt more suited for New York than I did Toronto. I felt mm-hmm. that Canadian society was much more apologetic, and the comedy I was doing was more against the grain at the time. It was more autobiographical and dirty stories about stripping and stuff like that, and it seemed like New York was more suited to that type of artistic vision. Okay, and then you, um, how did you sort of get hooked up with Gino and, and uh, begin with uh, Compound Media? Um, I've done Legion of Skanks a few times. Great show, a- by the way, tremendous show. And uh, Gino, I just knew from around the city, I knew it was an older school comic, and I'd never done a podcast. You know, when, when you're a comic, everybody kind of shoves this industry stuff down your throat where like, here's how you succeed. You have to do stand up this many nights. You have to work at these clubs. You have to do a podcast. You have to have a blog. And so I never listened. I always wanted to be different. I thought one of the beauties of doing stand up was to be different from everybody. Uh, so I was like, I'm never going to do a podcast. And I saw Gino one night at the stand and I go, you know, if I ever had to do a podcast, it'd only be with you because he's so quick. And he goes, let's do a podcast. And I go, all right, let's do, um, well, what do you want to call it? Let's call it in hot water and we'll do it in my hot tub on my deck. 
And as we were talking about this, Jeffrey Gurian, who writes for the Interabang, is like, you guys are doing a podcast? I'm going to write about that. So before we'd even done one, we'd already gotten press on these guys are doing a podcast. Mm. We did four of them at my place on Gino's laptop. And then uh, and I knew the Legion of Skanks were at Kumia at the time. And uh, Anthony, I think, was going to rehab at the time. So they were bringing in guest hosts. And Gino and I guest hosted. And then we're like, hey, we do this show. So after doing... Four times we got picked up by a great network, which is, you know, so rarely happens. There's guys that are slugging it out for years mm. before they get picked up. I swear to God that Compound Media, uh, you know, I won't throw InfoWars in there because InfoWars is in a whole league of its own. I'm very entertained by Alex. But in terms of free speech, in terms of comedy, in terms of quality content, Compound Media is the best fucking network in America. I'm just see that's what that's what we want to do with Liberty Multimedia up here, right? Not in the same way because we're journalists and we want to do more news sort of thing, kind of like Alex, uh, and along with uh, other people on our on our network. But still, it's that whole fighting for free speech. And I love I love the the guests that come on in Hot Water. I love Gino's rants. I think they're really really good. Uh, what I also love is you guys give people the platform to fight back and, and say what they want to say. If somebody wants to say that you suck, you give them the ability to do that. And, you know, we won't mention that faggot from Red Bar, but, you know, what I'm saying it, it's just like you get a lot of people from, from that organization, which I, I had to follow, I had to really go back and kind of rewatch because Compound Media puts out so much content, it's, it's hard to keep up, right? So you guys do, uh, I, I think it's a, gr a great sort of shtick to be able to allow people on and say, yeah, say what you want to say, and then we'll give you our, our side of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and I mean, if everybody likes what you're doing, you're doing something wrong. You've got to have people that hate what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, it's not good. You know, people, some people have to hate what you're doing to make it a good thing. So Absolutely. It's Absolutely. great. And I, I don't know, that other guy... I don't know what's happening with him, but I know he's been banned from all sorts of platforms now. Twitter, and you can't find him on there. Ah, fuck him. On from Twitch, uh, gone from Ustream. <laughs> yeah. Another cunt lost in the ether. Uh, I mean, it, it's like we have, it's like we're the walking dead and his show's the talking dead. You know, yeah, <laughs> it's like, exactly. hey, here's everything that happened on Compound Media this week. Yeah. I, I really think that his heart got broken when he, he got canned from that uh, network. I, I feel like that was all he wanted to do. Well, I think he, he talks about he might, he might have had a little man crush on Ant. you know, like I looked hey, up, but, I look up to Anthony, but not in that way because he's a, he's honestly one of the best broadcasters everywhere. And I'm doing sh this shit I have a, a, a similar mic stands you guys use. I have a, a similar sort of thing because he gave me that sort of motivation to do it. I'm like, fuck, Anthony's doing that. And, and him and Alex had a conversation where you have to do your own shit. You have to build your studio up. You have to put it out there. And, you know, it's as we're both at different levels. Uh, you are much more successful than I am, but we're both we're both in this fight together, you know what I'm saying? So I mean, it, there was like an old quote I heard, and I think ironically it was Whoopi Goldberg that said it, but it always sticks with me. And it's like, if you can look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, I'm doing exactly what I want to do, exactly the way I got to do it, exactly the way I want to do it, then I got it made and no one can tell me any different. It's mm -hmm. a great quote, you know? And starting off with um, uh, not being as familiar with podcasting and, and things like that, was there a specific broadcaster that you sort of looked up to, maybe other than Anthony, to, that you were like, yeah, I kind of want to, I don't want to do what this guy's doing, but I like how he's doing it. I think we were just like, let's just show up and be funny. Uh, I think, you know, I think Legion of Skanks was really good at that, and I think that that gave us, uh, you know, that gave us a good base, but we weren't trying to emulate anybody. We were just mm. like, let's do our own thing, and then the characters just came out of left field when we were like, we've got a green screen. We've got this great, I mean, Garrett and John and Allie are like the tops of what they do. And, and they're so quick. And I was like, we might as well make it like a show. So that's where the mm -hmm. characters came around from. And instead of just us sitting there talking, you know, and, yeah. uh, and I was, great. I didn't even know. Cause I uh, doing research, of course, I was watching your acting reel for the 24 hour rental, which I thought was really cool that you shot, uh, you shot it in Hamilton because I lived in Hamilton for four or five or no my shit. It was longer than that. <laughs> seven, seven or eight years. And, uh, it was like, Oh fuck. I remember 
this spot and it's kind of neat as you know canadians to see places that you walk by every day being on a show but you yeah. you did such a good voice aaron i didn't even know it was you the first time with the hat the hat and the cigar yeah. i haven't seen the show but i saw the clips because i just wanted to get a little taste for it couldn't even tell it was you f at first and you, you do a really really great job was there any wow. like was there any like acting experience uh other than uh the movies that you've done of course and i studied to be an actor for like three or four years like shakespeare improv scene study all in toronto that's that's what i wanted to do and then it just wasn't it wasn't taken off the way i wanted it to take off and that's how i started doing stand-up and then never looked back okay and you've also you've also of course authored two books uh, Mr. Manners, Proper Etiquette for the Modern Degenerate, and American yes. Etiquette, Failing Upwardly in a Fox News Nation. Uh, they're both available on Aaron's website, of course, uh, AaronBerg.com. Uh, what was sort of the motivation to write a book? Just You just wanted to get it out there and just do it? Yeah, Mr. Manners I really love. I mean, I still laugh at Mr. Manners. We used to read it on the show, and it's just so dirty and, and so wrong and so politically incorrect. And, and uh, I like American Etiquette, too, but American Etiquette was kind of like, I was like, I'm going to write a book with no cursing, nothing wrong, and this book is going to go way bigger. And it worked the exact opposite way. Like, <laughs> Mr. Manners sells way more copies. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. Well, people like a lot of like, dirty shit anyway. And you're, uh, you're doing Skank Fest uh, this weekend? How about Skank Fest on Saturday? Yeah. Powerful. So it should be great. Definitely, I, I want to get down there because uh, there's so many great comics. And Opie and Anthony, of course, were, were big influences. They introduced me to people like Rich Frost and, and Patrice and Jimmy and all these, these great people. Um, when uh, I guess also uh, you have, um, you're coming up on uh, the roast battle for season two. And I didn't even know, I subscribed to uh, Gas Digital, strict uh, Compound Media, I've been a subscriber since... I think October 2014, so like a month or two after Ant started. But Gas Digital, it was strictly for Legion of Skanks, and I didn't even know about the Roastmasters thing. And I watched you really, you, you lit up this guy. It wasn't completely lit up, but you really hammered this cancer guy a few I, times with chunks. And there was one about a deadpan with some, the, the pan yeah. that he jerked off with. And I'm like, holy fuck, that is Eric's so good. Style of comedy is described as deadpan, which is also what he calls the... Uh, dish he ejaculates into after chemotherapy oh such a, a great thing but with uh, a thing like roast battling why do you like battling because i like that back and forth thing it's like you're sitting around yeah. and and being with friends and what i did with my friends was we call each other faggots and and rip on one another's you know insecurities i guess and i love roast battle because it's right up on stage and just going back and forth roast battle's great because it's still like you get to really push the limits of good taste, and uh, and there's such a there's such a following for it. I did the Comedy Central one, but I I like to do characters sometimes, and I took a risk and did a character and fell flat on my face at that one. I went up against a Muslim girl, and I played her father that left when she was six <laughs> years old. You mean everyone? And, what's that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the crowd did not like it at all. So that one I bombed. I've only lost two roast battles. That was one, and then the other one was uh, Kurt Metzger, which was pretty close to a draw, but they gave it to Kurt. Well, how could you tell which one was you? And, and Kurt, you know, you're pretty... Yes. You, you did a good job with the, the costumes. And again, that's something that I, I really appreciate is just the, the character acting and you, you, kind of reminiscent of, of Jimmy a little bit with uh, how he does Chip and, and Uncle Paul. And you have your character now, Isis Faggot, DeAndre Harambe, and... It's uh, Fly it's Phil. I love Fly oh, Over Phil. My goddamn eagle! How yeah. f how fun is that to just go around the house and fucking say? So fun. And then we had the guy on that drove over all the Muslims this week. Oh, I uh, I haven't got all the way through that one, but uh, I saw Gino's rant and I saw you know uh, Bill Maher, which I'm not a, a huge fan of of Bill Maher, but uh, I like when Bill for some reason I like when Bill Maher comes on uh, in hot water. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah, he takes more chances on our show. He does. Uh, Aaron, uh, it's been a real pleasure, man. I don't want to keep you any longer. Uh, of course, everybody, follow Aaron on Twitter, at Aaron Burr Comedy, A-A-R-O-N-B-E-R-G. -E -E I fuck it up because I do it with Marconi so many times, and it's fluid. But uh, comedy, C-O-M-E-D-Y. Uh, like him on Facebook, Aaron Burr Comedy. Uh, go check out his, his website, of course, AaronBerg.com. 
Aaron, thank you very much for uh, for taking time, man. It's been a pleasure Thanks, talking. Kevin, and I'm glad you're doing what you're doing and keep going strong. Thanks, man. And uh, same to you guys at uh, In Hot Water and Compound Media. It's, uh, it's a fucking awesome show, and uh, I really implore anybody to uh to check it out so thanks again yeah. man and uh, have a great rest of your day thanks you too we'll talk soon take care man bye-bye and there he goes uh great interview with uh aaron berg and like i was saying to him he's a he's a really funny comic check him out i fucked up on the whole, <laughs> the whole t- writing thing but you know you get a little nervous sometimes and of course, you can follow me on Twitter, Maskell91, M-A-S-K-E-L-L-91. Didn't fuck that one up, did I? Uh, and subscribe to my network, uh, Maskell Podcasting Network, on iTunes. Rate, review, and share it with somebody who enjoys podcasting. Check out Liberty Multimedia as well for all the content that Marconi, Dylan, myself, we have up there. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for watching, everybody.